Greetings everybody, Chaplain Bob Walker here. John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Um, before I finish the uh, Kingdom of the Beast series, I thought I would mention something. A lot of people don't know it, but the American Bible Society was created to distribute Bibles. And it was created by Congress, the United States Congress. It was financed by the United States Congress to print King James Bibles and to have them placed in public libraries so that people who could know who could not afford Bibles would have access to being able to read one. And of course, through the years, the uh, everything has changed. But they used to uh, distribute Bibles to soldiers. And I think, I, from what I understand, they still do. But uh, sadly, they've gotten away from the King James Bible. And now, let's see, they... Oh, let's see. Well, well, we'll talk more about that in a bit. The first president of the American Bible Society was a guy named Elias. Elias, uh, I guess it's Baudinot, B-O-U-D-I-N-O-T. Sounds like a French name. Uh, he was the president of the Continental Congress, believe it or not. Uh, the years that he was president of the Continental Congress was from 1782 until 1783. Perhaps you've heard of John Jay. He was uh, the very first Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court. He was president of the American Bible Society in 1821. Uh, the American Bible Society was founded in 1816, uh, primarily by Protestants. Um, well, from what I understand, all Protestants. Uh, they did not really consider Catholics as Christians per se. Um, but you've got to know that uh, there's a guy, perhaps you've heard of him, called Morse. I think his name was John. I'm not sure. Um, perhaps you've heard of the Morse code, SOS. Yeah, he was the inventor of the Morse code. And uh, with the telegraph. And he wrote a scathing article or whatever on the papacy. I mean, he did not like them. So... Um, Perhaps you've heard of Francis Scott Key, the guy that wrote the uh, National Anthem. Do you know he was a vice president of the American Bible Society from 1817 until he died in 1843? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. They uh, provided Bibles and hotels, which is what the uh, Gideons do nowadays. And sadly, the Gideons have gotten away from the King James. Uh, matter of fact, when some people witnessed to me in a doctor's office when I was sick and didn't even want to live, that's how sick I was, they witnessed to me and I went to my hotel room and guess what I found in the drawer of the, you know, next to the bed? King James Bible. I looked up all the verses that they gave me. Uh, the lady had written, uh, took it a envelope out of her purse and a pen and wrote a bunch of Bible verses on the back of an envelope and handed it to me and said, look these up. And sure enough, King James Bible right there. And that was the night I repented and realized that the uh, everything that I had been taught about Christianity and the Bible was pretty much a lie by organized religion, I guess you could say. So but the American Bible Society provided Bibles and hotels, 
libraries, and they even actually had pocket Bibles for soldiers during the uh, American Civil War. Oh, yeah. Sadly, um, they... Uh, uh, well, yeah, the, uh, from what I understand, uh, now the American Bible Society print, publishes the contemporary English version of the Bible, uh, the CEV, which is based on Vatican manuscripts. Uh, the King James is not, the New Testament is not based on Vatican manuscripts. It is based on the Greek Orthodox Church's Greek manuscripts what they call the received text, or the Textus Receptus. They also are known for the, what's called the Good News Translation. I call it the Bad News Translation, but what can I tell you? And, uh, but just so that you know, from what I understand, they do not consider the Mormons or the Jehovah's Witnesses to be Christians, which I totally agree with. They're not, not even close. Uh, the Mormons believe that Jesus is the brother of Satan. So basically their savior is Satan's brother. Jehovah's Witnesses do not teach uh, that Jesus is God come in the flesh. They teach he is Michael the Archangel. Sorry, Jesus is Jesus and Michael is Michael. They're not the same. So, you know, when they're telling you, you know, yeah, whatever. Also, the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, said the world was going to end by 1975-76. Well, guess what? We're still here. So that means they're false prophets. And then they turn around and say, no, no, we, we really didn't say that. And then everybody's pointing to their literature that says, yeah, you did say that. Well, yeah, but we made a mistake. Now we have new light. Yeah, you got new light from the angel of light, the fallen angel who's the prince of darkness. That's, yeah. But Congress created the American Bible Society and funded it and uh, gave them money so that they could print Bibles and stick them in libraries. I mean, come on. You know, um, they weren't printing Talmuds. No. Oh, their creation date was uh, 1816, from what I understand. So, yeah. From what I understand, they've printed uh, and distributed millions of copies of the Bible. So, yep. Unbelievable. Sadly, uh, they are not what they used to be. So. so I hope you enjoy this little bit of interesting history. Um, so, you know, it's uh, America has gone downhill fast. And believe it or not, when I was in elementary school, at least in first grade, I'm not sure about second or third, but in 1964, they took the Bible and prayer out of public schools. Of course, we didn't have mass shootings back then in schools and uh, kids bringing guns to school and killing people, if you could believe anything on the news. I mean, you know, that's if you believe anything on the news. But um, I do remember in first grade, we had... Bible reading and prayer in Jesus' name in elementary school. I was among, well, I was the last generation to see that. The last. And you could look at uh, how America has degenerated since that time period. We kicked God out of school and look where we are today. Do you know Chicago, just Chicago alone, averages two murders a day? The entire United States in 1960 did not even have as many murders as Chicago has by itself. 
and Chicago is not even the largest city anymore. Now, in the 1890s, Chicago was the largest city in the United States, or 1880s, I should say, for sure, um, because all the railroads went through Chicago, pretty much everything. Uh, when New York City started, uh, when they started using steel ships, the Port of New York uh, made it become the largest city in the United States. L.A. is second. Chicago's third. But uh, the murder rate has just gone up exponentially. It's absolutely horrible, the state of affairs. But know one thing. One day, there's going to be some earthquake or earthquakes that are going to wipe out some cities. God's people will be helped. And that is in Revelation chapter 12. And if you're interested, you can always say, Hey, Bob, what was that uh, thing about the earthquakes you were talking about? And I'll send you some links of some Bible studies I've done that goes into it in detail. But uh, Lord's going to let things get worse and worse and worse until it gets to the point where he's tired of it all. And then it's going to be judgment time for this evil and wicked nation of ours. So, I don't know. All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.